Today on Ridge Roamer, we're going to go over the components, operation, and how to ride a 1946 Indian Chief. So I've had this 1946 Indian Chief for 10 or 12 years now. Uh, it is obviously not a show queen. It's not the cleanest. I live in the gravel. Um, my goal is to keep it operational and keep it riding. I try to get it out on the road every so often. Have a good time with it. Um, not opposed to restorations to like new condition, but I like old motorcycles with a story. So uh, this particular one here, if you have an astute eye, it is not 100% correct. It has been modified over the years to, uh, to keep it running, to change it uh, a little bit here and there, uh, primarily in the, in the sense of operation. Uh, there are a few things that aren't correct as well, just as far as looks. Uh, one of those being the horn mounted up top. Uh, the horn was not mounted above the headlight uh, in 1946. 1946 it was actually mounted right down here um, inside the crash bars. Uh, the headlight is also not correct. But one of the uh, biggest things here is that it was a 12 volt conversion. So these 6 volt uh, charging systems were designed all the way back in the 30s. Uh, at that point they didn't have any idea why someone would want to ride a motorcycle after dark for very long. So they didn't design the charging system to be able to handle that. So this one has a modern alternator, a 12 volt belt driven in place of the 6 volt generator. Um, you can notice, you may notice here, I do have the uh, passenger pegs. Yes, that's what these are, passenger pegs behind the rider floorboards. I have the buddy seat for it, also called the chum seat, the two-up seat. Uh, but I have it off because it's really just me that rides this. Um, it's a little bit of a challenge with a passenger. But overall, a uh, very nice example of a 1946 Chief Going over some of the basics here, um, 1946, you could have the throttle be either the right hand side or the left hand side. Typically, if you learned how to ride in the military during World War II, you had a left hand throttle so that you could still fire with your right hand. Uh, so those guys kept the throttle on the left hand side. Most other civilian bikes were right hand throttle. So um, like myself, uh, I am used to modern right hand, so my right hand twist grip is the throttle. Left hand still twists though. Left hand on this is actually your timing or your spark advance. So as I rotate that, you can see down here on the distributor, it's actually changing the timing. So something that uh, you don't have to do on modern bikes anymore clutch is actually the left foot rocker so you can press forward and it does not return uh, nothing is spring loaded on these bikes if you want to um, engage and disengage the clutch you do use it in rocker form uh, it is kind of nice though because if uh, if you do need to come to a stop and put your left foot down you're still able to do that um, shifting is a jockey suicide hand, whatever you want to call it, shift. And the positions are all the way forward is first, back one click is neutral, and then second, and then third. Nothing's synchronized, and obviously it's not running anyway, but um, so that's how the uh, shifting works. The brakes are actually exactly the same as they are on modern bikes. So rear brake here, front brake here, of course they're drum, um, pretty old school when you, when you uh, 
pull the brakes, you apply at least a little bit of force, uh, not the best brakes in the world. And then this bicycle pedal is your kickstart. No electric start on this beast. Um, not really uh, a thing that was put on bikes for quite a while after this. Fuel tanks. Primary fuel tank is here on the left. Reserve fuel tank here on the right. And then your oil tank is also on the right up front. Uh, once the motorcycle is riding, uh, or once it's running, your fuel or your oil pump, which is right down here on the side, is taking oil from the tank, pumping it down through all the engine components that need oil, and then back up to the tank. There's a uh, tube that comes up through the middle of the oil and it bubbles out. Always a good idea to check your fuel pump, or your oil pump, excuse me, once uh, you're actually up and running. Make sure that oil is circulating. Other questions people ask about uh, this knob here. They're different on different styles, but this is actually your steering dampener. So if you twist it, it makes it harder to rotate the, uh, the handlebars. And if you loosen it, it makes it easier. Suspension on this bike is a girder style front fork. So different than a Springer. A uh, Springer has your linkage here at the bottom at the axle this one retains the linkage up top and your spring up top um, with one fork that goes down to your front axle on the rear it is actually a plunger style suspension so let's lift this up a little bit here so you've got um, some connection of your frame for your suspension on the bottom and on the top and then in the middle there's essentially a clamp on your swing arm and that allows the rear swing arm to go up and down very minimally uh, but it does give you some rear suspension which was a very nice thing at this time and then your seat post also has a spring in it so you've got some suspension there as well as I said, my bike has been updated to 12 volts, so it does have a 12 volt battery in there. But overall, things are very original. This is your air intake here, going into the carburetor. Fuel cutoff valve for this gas tank. And then your reserve tank here is gonna have its own fuel cutoff valve. And up front you've got drains for your oil tank uh, for when you do need to change the oil. Oil changes on these were quite a bit more intensive. Every 500 miles was the recommendation. And one thing I'll note here on this shift linkage, since my bike is set up with the right hand throttle, you accordingly have the left hand shifter. If you were to reverse that and you put the throttle on the left hand then you would also reverse your shifter put it on the right hand side and this linkage here allows that shifter to mount in either location so very easy to change then your linkage comes down goes into your transmission for shifting gears so now we're going to go through the basic procedure for starting um, every old bike has its own quirks, so you have to kind of get to, to know them. But uh, the general process is to turn your choke on, turn your fuel valve on, open your throttle all the way, leave your key off, make sure your timing is not advanced, then give it two priming kicks Come back over, put your choke mostly up. Most bikes are one or two clicks down, depending on the temperature. Take your fuel, 
cut it off almost all the way. Turn it on typically just a little bit. Again, verify that your timing is not advanced. You will only do that once. It will throw you over the handlebars or break your leg. From that point, you can then turn the key on and give it a starting kick. So we're gonna go over that uh, here with me actually doing it and you can see how it works. Petcock on, choke full, throttle full, timing mostly retarded, key off. Now we're going to do a couple of prime kicks. Now throttle mostly closed, choke mostly off. On again, making sure the timing is not advanced. timing been started in a while so it's probably been a couple of months so now that it's finally warming up it'll idle down Keep using the timing and the throttle. Keep it running, but allow it to idle down. So we're ready to start riding.
that it's really warmed up, we can idle it down even more. Retard the timing some. Choke the rest of the way off. Starts to get more like an old tractor. best practice when you're ready to shut it down uh, the best thing you can do is kind of drain out the fuel lines so what I like to do is get down actually shut off the fuel petcock and then uh, just let it idle out so there's not gas in the fuel lines anymore that way you know your carburetor is pretty well empty fuel lines are empty shut off the key and we're done for today appreciate you joining us on Ridge Roamer today if you've got any questions on this old bike or you've got any uh, input or stories of your own feel free to comment below um, it's definitely been a joy owning this riding it uh, I feel very privileged and uh, there's not a whole lot of them out there, but I'm going to do my best to keep this one on the road. Have a great day.